Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK and welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through. Born in the UK, Jamaican parents, um, yeah, work full time. I do vlogging like I do this. I run a magazine, I DJ on the last Friday of the month on loversrockradio.com. I'm a published author and I think that's enough about me. Now, what I wanted to talk today is about Britishness. What is it to be British? How do you become British? Is being British a privilege or a right? And how does it all work? Um, technically, it's supposed to work based on legislation. But when legislation changes, how does it work then? Because if you came in, like, say, before 1948, the British Nationality Act 1948, all the British Commonwealth and all the colonies, we were all British. Everyone was British. There was no, about 150 million were British. And um, it was just a given. Didn't have to worry about it. We could come and go as we liked. Um, we could work and live in the UK. And so when our grandparents and our parents came to the UK, they came over as Commonwealth citizens, therefore British citizens, and there wasn't no barrier at all. So then what happens? Well, most of the Caribbean and India, they went independent. So, in 1962, they stopped the free movement of immigrants. What they with what they determined, what they determined, what they termed us then for our audacity to be going independent. They stopped free movement, and therefore, unless your grandparent had a pass, had a British passport, you weren't British. Fortunately, truly, his grandmother does have a British passport and she actually lived here for quite a long time before she died. But the fact of the matter is the rules changed as we were going along our merry way and none of us knew about it. So subsequent people were coming to England believing that they were under the same protection as their grandparents or parents were and it's not the case. We all know that there's been about 150 revocations of the British citizenship due for the public good. So what is being a British citizen? Today we can't really tell because British citizen seems to be quite fluid. It doesn't seem to have any um, Whereas before you could say, yeah, I'm a British citizen. And whether it's because you're born on the soil or otherwise, you can't do that now. Because, you know, the British Nationality Act in 1982 changed automatic citizenship for when you're born in the country. So what do you do? How can you um, feel secure in your citizenship, in your status? It does appear as though they really are trying to get rid of those persons who are a bit too far removed to be British. So the new ones, the new blacks, the ones, let's say, who came to the UK after 1982. They're considered the new blacks, so they definitely wouldn't have any automatic right to citizenship. Even if they marry a British citizen, even if they've got children who are British, they can still be deported. Naturalised citizens can be deported, and like it says in our respective passports, it is a privilege and not a right, and our citizenship can be revoked at any time the Crown deems necessary. At the moment, it's revoked because of the public good, and 
there's nothing we can really do about it. So, I wrote down a few notes as I normally do. What have I got here? Caribbean history has shaped Britain, yet we're not allowed to be called British. There is a resistance to black people being called British. Well, not really a resistance to black people being called British. It's fine that they call British, but they dare not be called English. English is really for the Anglo-Saxons. So let's not get it twisted, folks. We can't go around saying we're English. We can go around saying we're British because automatic British means people of colour. The dusky coloured skin, the blacks and the Asians, they're the ones who are called British. So, white, white Britain who held whole prejudices need to accept that they are biased and own it instead of stigmatising blacks and denouncing blacks as an excuse to get them out. Yeah, we need people to say it like it is. You know, like in America, they make it quite clear. It'd be much more, um, well, you know, the people who behave like this don't really care whether or not we respect them or not. So it's not about respect. It's about allowing people to know where they stand. And it's almost like um, we're meant to feel as though we're accepted. We're meant to feel comfortable, not in all cases, because in certain cases, of course, we're genuinely comfortable in the country. But certain people are meant to feel as though they are accepted and comfortable. Meanwhile, un there's an undercurrent of uncertainty and there's an undercurrent of instability. So as a result, we have a section of people in the UK who cannot feel secure and who cannot feel as though England is their home, even though they've been here since they were children. Because we know from the deportations last week, that, was it last week or has it gone the 11th of February? Time flies so fast. We know that from the deportations that no one is safe if you're not born in a country and if you do a dis misdemeanor in the country, you're not safe. You could be deported for either of those. National security, misdemeanor, regardless of how small the misdemeanor. It depends on the discretion of the Crown and of the, the prosecution service. So who is safe? Which blacks are safe in the UK? Well, I'd like to think I'm safe. I'd like to think I'm safe. Based on the criteria that they have at the moment in this time 2020, that your grandparent must hold a British passport. So based on that premise, I'd like to think I'm safe. My children, of course, would be safe. Thank God they were born before 1982. Had they not, I'd be talking a different story. And of course, grandchildren, they will, should be safe, albeit their colour because we've been here too long. And so we have earned a right to British citizenship. But those who have either come after 1982, who are not born in the country, who may have naturalized themselves, they do not have an automatic right and it can be withdrawn at any time. So you've married a British female or uh, uh, somebody from abroad has married a British male and you've got your citizenship through that means and then for whatever reason you break up your citizenship can be revoked if they want to be nasty if they want to stick to these new new rules that they're coming up with if they want to minimise immigration, reduce immigration, 
They can use any excuse as long as you're not born on the soil. The only disclaimer, if you're born on the soil and you have done something like Shemaima Begum and other people who have um, been involved in in terrorism or national security, then they can draw the line. And we know that Shemima Begum, her application was denied. And But it's written in black and white in your passport anyway. So don't think just because you have a British passport, they can't kick you out. They can. So that's what I'm saying. What is that is why I'm saying British citizenship is a right or is it a privilege? And if it is a right, who is who has that right? Let me see what else I've written here. The 1962 Immigration and Commonwealth Act repealed the free movement of subjects from the British Empire immigrating to the UK. And like I said, that was probably due to um, the independence. And like I said, you can't blame them. If you've gone independent, they owe you no loyalty. So, like I said, you can't have your cake and eat it. But I don't think they expected the laws to change. That is the problem. People from the Commonwealth did not expect the laws to change. They, oh, they decided to go and be independent and do whatever they wanted. But they still expected the UK to be loyal to them. And the, loyal, and the UK decided, you piss on us, we'll piss on you, love. Basically. You've withdrawn regardless of the history. Regardless of the wrongs, regardless of how we became a commonwealth, regardless of how the UK invited us over, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As far as the UK government is concerned, we owe you nothing. You are ungrateful. We civilised you, we gave you a language, we put you on solid ground, we gave you jobs and you had the audacity to go independent, how dare you? Well we are go we're going to fix you, we're going to introduce a legislation that stops your free movement. And in came the visas. So. You couldn't just jump on a plane and come to the UK and go back. You needed a visa. And that's how it all started. I don't know why they waited so long. Anyway, especially since um, it was the 1962 Immigration and Commonwealth Act that repealed free movement. Why did they wait until 2002 before they decided to introduce visas from Jamaica? Anyway, the 1971 Commonwealth Act that came in after we joined the EU. And um, yeah, I think that was the last chance we had to be British citizens or earn that right to be British citizens and not be deported. If you came before 1971, you were okay. Everyone else after that, you're not safe. Not safe at all. We don't know what they've got in their little minds. We don't know what they're cooking up. But we know they're cooking up something. They always are. They're always looking for ways around it. What can we do next? Who can we get at next? So, what have we, else have we got here? So um, now we see Jamaicans with British wives, British children being sent back to countries they haven't been back to since childhood. Do they care? Of course not. They had no business coming here in the first place. We didn't invite that lot here. We invited the Windrush. They had certain rights and even then 
83 of them were wrongfully deported. And they have rights to be here. 11 people are dead with stress or whatever else killed them. Now, 150 have had citizenships revoked since 2010 for the public good. 150. So don't think you can, can't, can't get your, even if you've got a passport, don't think it can't be revoked. I mean, public good is by their definition. Public good can mean anything. Public good could mean that you've committed a crime, a minor crime. That might not be for the public good if you're a foreigner. So they can use that. They can use minor crimes and think, mm -mm, we can't have somebody like you over here. We can't have somebody like you in our country. We can't have a criminal like you. Even though, if the same crime was committed by somebody in the country, or born in the country, it wouldn't mean anything. It, there would be no penalty, apart from a slap on the wrist, or maybe a couple of months um, service, whatever kind of service they do, probation, whatever it is. But, if you're from abroad, if you're from one of those dark countries, you're going to be made an example of. And if you've dared to naturalise yourself as British and then misbehave, you're going to feel the wrath of the British law. That keeps changing. That's fluid. That evolves every year almost. And even if it doesn't, behind the scenes, things are happening that we don't know about. Last thing was the hostile environment policy. Look what that did to so many people. Four years later, what are they concocting behind the scenes? We don't know. We don't know. All we know is that the hostile environment policy was there to root out everybody, to make um, people in this country's lives hell, whether they're legal or not. And the sad thing is, it affected, it adversely affected more legal people than it did illegal. That's the sad thing. Legal people suffered for illegal immigrants. Once again, it's about making us, it's about them making a spectacle, making an example of black people in the country who they don't know enough about. They don't know enough about the history. You've got young people working in government who haven't got a clue about history. Not a clue. They just see black people on the street and think they're immigrants. Well, as far as they're concerned, they are, whether they're born here or not. Black or immigrant. Accent or immigrant. Well, accent, yeah, probably. But black, oh yeah, must be an immigrant, must be illegal. Can't, can't be, can't be legal. It's bloody black, isn't they? What are they doing here? So who does deserve to be British? Have you got the answer? Legally? Those from the Commonwealth and their ancestors deserve to be British, but that is not the case because laws change. The 1981 British Nationality Act redefined citizenship. You have to qualify for citizenship now. No such thing as birthright citizenship in certain cases. Are the parents citizens? Are you a naturalised citizen? It all makes a difference. Somebody called Lord Houghton in 1870 said that not only was too much power being placed in the hands of the executive, but the law was also discriminatory in dealing differently with naturalised than with British-born subjects. The thing is, is that, sh well, should a naturalised citizen receive the same kudos or the same rights as a British born citizen. What is there a difference? There isn't really 
because they can revoke your citizenship even if you're born on the soil. So there's no security whether you're naturalised or British born. Not really. Commonwealth citizens are deprived of citizenship for the slightest reason. Shamima Begum is about the ability of the government to revoke the citizenship of a British born person. The deportations raised the question of whether individuals, many of whom came here as children, should be seen as foreign because they committed a crime when if they had not done so, they would be seen as British. That's an interesting one, that is. I think that was from the Independent, because you're British as long as... But that's like in the games, and any time you see black people as footballers winning awards... And, you know, up there, you know, making the country money, <clears throat> they're British. As soon as they commit a crime, they're foreign. How does that work? How does it work that you can be British and, an, you know, a positive example and celebrated on the TV screens when you're in the limelight and you're making money? You do one thing wrong and God forbid you're relegated to the back of the line, love. At the heart of the Windrush scandal are British citizens who the Home Office refused to see as such. And like I said, they're not going to see you as citizens when you're black. That's a sad thing with that, with that kind of government. It's sad, but that is the truth. But what I don't get is... It's miseducation. Why can't they educate people? I mean, we're in 2020, for Christ's sake. 2020. You mean to say they cannot tell people the truth even now? After all these years? I mean, yeah, I can understand your lies in the past. But why keep lying? Why not tell people? The truth about the history of what happened and how so many black people came into the country and how they were justified in coming in and how you didn't expect them to settle and have children and set up home here. Admit your mistakes, tell the truth instead of creating hostility and the hostile environment policy when it's your fault in the first place, why so many of us are here. Do you think my mum was in Jamaica, sitting there minding her own business? She was a seamstress doing all well and good and stuff like that. Do you think if she hadn't been, if there hadn't been all this um, hoo-ha about, oh, come to Britain, make some money or what, get a job and we'll do this and we'll do that. Do you think if, if Britain hadn't stuck their nose in Jamaica or other parts of the Caribbean, that Caribbeans would have found their way to the UK? They wouldn't. They wouldn't have known nothing about it if Britain had kept their mouth shut. If they'd got on with what they were doing, nobody would have been none the wiser. Everybody would have been in their respective countries doing their own thing. But oh no, Britain thinks all oh, our country's in a mess. We ain't doing it. Too much dirty work. Let's go and bring some niggers over here. Let's go and bring some blacks and we can give them less money. Let them do all the dirty work and then on their bikes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll make it look attractive. We'll tell them we're going to give them this. We'll tell them we're going to give them that. With the, e with the um, refugees from the EU, they paid their transport over. They um, gave them the jobs and they allowed them to naturalise within a few, few weeks. They gave them the creme de la creme treatment. But oh no, not the Caribbeans. They had to pay for their own way coming over here. And when they come over here, they're treated like shit. Uprooted, thinking they're having an opportunity. People love an opportunity. So you get an opportunity that says, 
And it's like when people from the UK and they, I remember in The Guardian years ago, and they used to have these jobs. You can go and live in Dubai, uh, Dubai for a year, work in Dubai for a year or work in all these countries for a year. It's the same kind of thing. It's an opportunity. So when, when people from the Caribbean saw the UK as an opportunity, don't knock them for that. And when they came over here and found out they were tricked, that's not their fault. Yeah, they were a bit gullible, probably. They believed when they said they were coming over here for jobs. And yes, they did get jobs. But don't blame them for their zealousness, their ambition and their ability to succeed against all the odds. Don't blame them for that. Don't blame them because they decided that they wanted to build houses and make themselves feel secure because they were treated like shit. They couldn't even get a room to live in. So don't blame them for trying to make themselves feel better and make themselves feel at home. You didn't give them a temporary contract. What else have we got here? British citizenship is a privilege, not a right. Yes, I agree. But who is it a privilege for? You need to be consistent. You can't keep changing the law. You can't keep moving the goalpost. You might be a British citizen depending on where you were born, your parents' circumstances and when you were born. Because the law changes. Should it be able to change like that? Should you be able to change the law at whim so you don't even know whether you're coming or going? Don't you think that's a bit devious? A bit deceptive a bit yeah, a bit deceptive, isn't it? Because it's not like you're paint but you're it's not like you're putting it on all the TV screens and you see these big posters. Oh, if you're born after nineteen eighty two, things have changed. No, you don't. You only find out when you want something. If you want to do something, like you want to go on holiday, then you find out, oh, uh-oh, I didn't know that. I didn't realise that. You are automatically a British citizen if you were born in the UK. There are, however, two exceptions. You will not be a British citizen if your father was either a diplomat working for a foreign country, an enemy alien in occupation. Not quite sure what that is. This only applies if you... This only applies to you if your father was in the Channel Islands during World War II when you were born. If you were born in a British colony, you are automatically a British citizen if both the following apply. You are a citizen of the UK and the colonies, CUKC, on the 31st of December 1982. You had the right of abode in the UK. This means you could live and work in the UK free of any immigration controls. Prior to 1982, the 31st of December 1982. There's one exception. You might not be a British citizen if you got the certificate to confirm that you're registered as a citizen of the United Kingdom and the colonies under the British Nationality Act No. 2 Act 1964. Now, what is that? That is an exception. You might not be a British citizen if you got a certificate to confirm that you're registered as a citizen of the United Kingdom and colonies under the British Nationality Act 1964. Hmm. Might have to look into that. Hmm. The 2014 Immigration Act institutionalised a hostile environment and allowed for revocation of citizenship, even where a person may be left stateless. So, they don't care if you're going to be stateless, even though it's against the law to make people stateless. That's what I'm saying. They, they change the law as you go along. More Britons had their citizenship revoked in 2017 than in both world wars combined. The government used use of controversial powers to remove British citizenship has soared by more than 600% in a year. Shimema Begum is one of more than 150 people subjected to the measure for public good since 2010. 
The removal of citizenship means the 19 year old has no right to enter the UK or gain a British passport and cannot request assistance to leave the Syrian camp where she currently detained with her newborn son. This must be old because I think her son died. Miss Bagan's family are at launch here. I think this is old news, this bit. Um, let me see what else we've got. Official statistics show citizenship deprivations were used only a handful of times a year until they rocketed from 14 people in 2016 to 104 in 2017. The Home Office declined to give a reason for the dramatic increase and said it could not provide a breakdown of how many ISIS members were involved or the justification for each case. The government has argued that citizenship deprivations protect the public, but critics accused it of abdicating responsibility and setting a dangerous precedent. So, there you have it. I hope you found this useful. If you didn't, you can put the thumbs down. And if you did, you can share it and you can like and why not subscribe? I do tend to talk about a lot of different things, so you might be disappointed in some in some cases, but sometimes, yeah, hopefully you find something useful. Bye-bye.